listening to the Holy Bible One Year Challenge with master storyteller Michael Wood, featuring the easy to read version and used by permission from Bible Week International. Enjoy the show. Hello, everyone. Welcome to day 40. We're continuing in the book of Exodus. Moses doesn't think he can do the job of playing messenger for God. To free God's people, he needs to speak to Pharaoh. And if any of you have ever talked to somebody really important, you can imagine how nerve-wracking that can be. Never mind Pharaoh, who's practically a god and can do terrible things to you if he doesn't like you. So God gives him an assistant, his brother Aaron, to speak for him. And he also gives Moses a walking stick that turns into a snake and a bunch of other miracles that Moses can perform. This is perhaps the most that we've ever seen God have a dialogue with somebody in the Bible, where they're literally having a back and forth conversation about what lies ahead. And we're also continuing in the book of Matthew, and Jesus is in great distress. So he goes to pray to the Lord, not once, not twice, but three times throughout the night. And he needs his followers to be there for him, but they're a little busy sleeping. But during that time, Jesus prays that God take this cup away from him. But as Jesus ends his prayer, he ultimately prays that let God's will be done. If you enjoy the show, visit me at patreon.com forward slash story master. You'll find the link in the description box below. By contributing as little as $1 per month, you will enable me to continue this ministry. And you'll get cool rewards too. Together, we're going to get through the Bible in one year. Let's get started. Exodus chapter 4. Proof for Moses. Moses is speaking to the Lord. And then Moses answered, But the Israelites will not believe me when I tell them that you sent me. They will say, The Lord did not appear to you. The Lord said to Moses, What is that you have in your hand? Moses answered, It is my walking stick. Throw your walking stick on the ground, the Lord told him. So Moses threw his walking stick on the ground, and it became a snake. Moses ran from it, but the Lord said to him, Reach out and grab the snake by its tail. When Moses reached out, and grabbed the snake's tail and changed back into a walking stick. And then God said, Do this miracle so that the people will believe you. You will know that you saw the Lord, the God your ancestors worship, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Again, the Lord spoke to Moses and said, Put your hand inside your robe. So Moses put his hand inside his robe. When he brought his hand out, it was diseased. The skin on his hand was dry and white as snow. Then God said, Now put your hand inside your robe again. So Moses put his hand inside his robe. When he brought it out, it was healthy again. It looked the same as the rest of his skin. And then God said, If the people don't believe you when you do the first miracle with your walking stick, They will believe you when you show them this miracle. If they still refuse to believe after you show them both of these signs, take some water from the Nile River, pour the water on the ground, and as soon as it touches the ground, it will turn to blood. Then Moses said to the Lord, Please, Lord, I am not the one to go. I am not good with words. I've never been able to speak well. Even talking to you now is a problem for me. I have to go slow when I speak and often don't know what to say. Then the Lord said to him, Who makes a person able to speak or not? Who can make someone able to hear or not? Who can make a person blind or able to see? I am the one who does such things. I am the Lord. So go now. I will be with you when you speak. I will help you know what to say. But Moses said, 
please, Lord. I beg you to send someone else, not me. Then the Lord became angry with Moses and said, Aaron the Levite is your brother, isn't he? I know he is a good speaker, and he is already on his way here to meet you. He will be happy to see you. He will be your voice and speak to the people for you. You will act as God for him, giving him the words I give to you. I will help you both know what to say and do. Take the walking stick with you and use it to do miracles that show my power. Moses leaves Midian. Then Moses went back to Jethro, his father-in-law. Moses said to him, Please let me go back to Egypt. I want to see if my people are still alive. Jethro said to Moses, Go in peace. Moses was still in Midian when the Lord said to him, It is safe for you to go back to Egypt now. The men who wanted to kill you are now dead. So Moses put his wife and children on a donkey and began the trip to Egypt. He carried the walking stick that held God's power. The Lord said to him, When you get to Egypt, be sure to show Pharaoh all the miracles that I have given you the power to do. But I will make Pharaoh very stubborn. He will not let the people go. And then you will say to Pharaoh, This is what the Lord says. Israel is my firstborn son. I have told you to let him go so he can serve me. You have refused to let this son of mine go. So I will kill your firstborn son. On the way to Egypt, Moses stopped at a place to spend the night. The Lord came to Moses there and wanted to kill him. So Zipporah took a flint knife and circumcised her son. She took the skin and touched Moses between his legs with it. She said to Moses, This blood will keep you safe. So God let Moses live. When Zipporah said, This blood will keep you safe, she was talking about the blood from the circumcision. The Lord had spoken to Aaron and told him, Go out into the desert and meet Moses. So Aaron went and met Moses at the mountain of God. He saw Moses and greeted him with a kiss. Moses told Aaron what the Lord had told him to say in Egypt. And he told Aaron about the miracles the Lord had commanded him to do. So Moses and Aaron went to Egypt and gathered all the leaders of the Israelites. Then Aaron spoke to the people and told them everything the Lord had told Moses. Then Moses did the miracles for all the people to see, and they believed. They understood that the Lord was now there to help them and had seen their troubles. So they bowed down and worshiped him. Exodus chapter five, Moses and Aaron before Pharaoh. After Moses and Aaron talked to the people, they went to see Pharaoh. They told him, The Lord, the God of Israel, says, Let my people go into the desert, so that they can have a festival to honor me. But Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord? Why should I obey him? Why should I let his people Israel go? I don't even know who this Lord is. So I refuse to let Israel go. Then Aaron and Moses said, The God of the Hebrew people has asked us to do this. So please let us travel for three days into the desert to offer a sacrifice to the Lord our God. If we don't go, he will kill us with disease or by war. The Pharaoh said to them, Moses and Aaron, you should not keep the people from doing their work. All of you get back to work. Then Pharaoh said, I can't believe how many of these people there are now, and you too want them to stop working? That same day, Pharaoh gave a command to the slave masters and Israelite foremen. He said, Now, you must stop providing the straw these people need to make their bricks. Let them go and find it themselves, but they must still make the same number 
of bricks as they did before. Don't let them do any less. They have become lazy. That's why they are begging me to let them go and make sacrifices to their god. So make these people work harder. Keep them busy. Then they will not have enough time to listen to any lies from their leaders. So the Egyptian slave masters and the Israelite foremen went to the Israelites and said, Pharaoh has decided that he will not give you straw for your bricks. Then go and find straw for yourselves wherever you can. But you must still make as many bricks as you made before. So the people went everywhere in Egypt gathering whatever small pieces of straw they could find in the fields. The slave masters forced the people to work even harder. They forced the people to make as many bricks as they did when the Egyptians provided the straw. The Egyptian slave masters beat the Israelite foremen they had put in charge of the work. As they beat them, the Egyptians asked, Why haven't you done what we told you to do? Why aren't you making as many bricks now as you made before? Then the Israelite foreman went to Pharaoh and said, Why do you treat your slaves this way? First, that no one gives us any straw. Then our masters order us to make bricks. We can't do it. They beat us. But it's not our fault. Your own people are to blame. Pharaoh answered, You are lazy and don't want to work. That's why you keep asking me. Let us go and make sacrifices to the Lord. Now, go back to work. We will not give you any straw. And you must still make as many bricks as you did before. The Israelite foremen knew they were in trouble. Because now they had to tell the workers, You must still make as many bricks every day as you made before. When they left the meeting with Pharaoh, they found Moses and Aaron outside waiting for them. They said to Moses and Aaron, May the Lord judge and punish you for what you did. Because of you, Pharaoh and his officials are disgusted with us. You've given them an excuse to kill us. Then Moses went back to the Lord and said, Lord, why have you done this terrible thing to your people. Why did you send me here? I went to Pharaoh and said what you told me to say, but since that time he has made the people suffer even more, and you have done nothing to help your people. Exodus 6 verses 1 through 12. Then the Lord said to Moses, now you will see what I will do to Pharaoh. I will use my great power against him, and he will let my people go. In fact, when he sees my power, he will force them to go. And then God said to Moses, I am the Lord. I appeared to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They called me God all-powerful. They did not know my name, Yahweh. I made an agreement with them to give them the land of Canaan, where they were living as immigrants. Now, I have heard the Israelites slaves in Egypt groaning in pain, and I remember my agreement. So tell the Israelites that I say to them, I am the Lord. I will save you from your hard labor. You will no longer be slaves of the Egyptians. I will use my great power to make you free and will bring terrible punishment to the Egyptians. You will be my people and I will be your God. I am the Lord your God. You will know that I freed you from your work as slaves in Egypt. I will lead you to the land that I promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I will give you that land to keep. Believe this because I am the Lord. So Moses told this to the Israelites. The people did not listen to him. They were too worn out from all their hard work to hear what he was saying. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go and tell Pharaoh that he must 
Let the Israelites leave this land. Moses answered, But Lord, if the Israelites refuse to listen to me, why would Pharaoh listen to me? After all, I am a terrible speaker. Matthew 26, verses 31 to 46. Jesus told his followers, Tonight you will lose your faith in me, and the scriptures say, I will kill the shepherd, and the sheep will run away. But after I am killed, I will rise from death, and I will go into Galilee. I will be there before you come. Peter answered, all the other followers may lose their faith in you, but my faith will never be shaken. Jesus answered, The truth is, tonight you will say you don't know me. You will deny me three times before the cockerel crows. But Peter answered, I will never say I don't know you. I will even die with you. And all the other followers said the same thing. Then Jesus went with his followers to a place called Gethsemane. He said to them, Sit here while I go there and pray. He told Peter and the two sons of Zebedee to come with them, and he began to be very sad and troubled. Jesus said to Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, My heart is so heavy with sorrow. I feel as if I'm dying. Wait here and stay awake with me. Then Jesus went on a little farther away from them. He fell to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, don't make me drink from this cup, but do what you want, not what I want. Then he went back to his followers and found them sleeping. He said to Peter, Could you men not stay awake with me for one hour? Stay awake and pray for strength against temptation. Your spirit wants to do what is right, but your body is weak. Then Jesus went away a second time and prayed, My father, if I must do this, and it is not possible for me to escape it, I pray that what you want will be done. Then he went back to the followers. And again he found them sleeping. They could not stay awake. So he left them and went away one more time and prayed. This third time he prayed, he said the same thing. Then Jesus went back to the followers and said, Are you still sleeping and resting? The time has come for the Son of Man to be handed over to the control of sinful men. Stand up! We must go. Here comes the one who will hand me over. Proverbs chapter 4, verses 10 through 19. Choose the path of wisdom. Son, listen to me. Do what I say, and you will live a long time. I am teaching you about wisdom and guiding you on the right path. When you walk on it, you will not step into a trap. Even if you run, you will not trip and fall. Always remember this teaching. Don't forget it. It is the key to life, so guard it well. Don't take the path of the wicked. Don't follow those who do evil. Stay away from that path. Don't even go near it. Turn around and go another way. The wicked cannot sleep until they have done something evil. They will not rest until they bring someone down. They had rather do evil than eat. They enjoy hurting others as much as good wine. The path of those who do what is right is like the early morning light. It gets brighter and brighter until the full light of day. But the path of the wicked is like a dark night. They trip and fall over what they cannot see. Thank you, everyone. That was day 40. Join us for day 41. Talks between Moses, Aaron, and Pharaoh have broken down. And so it's time to pull out the big guns and use some miracles from God to try to persuade Pharaoh to let the Hebrew people go. 
and the first plagues of Egypt quickly fall upon him. And in the book of Matthew, things get serious for Jesus as he is arrested by the Roman authorities and must stand trial before the religious leaders. We hope you enjoyed today's verses. Be sure to leave us a positive review and to share this podcast with your friends and family. Please join us for the next episode as we experience the Bible in one year. Did you know we offer online courses in creative writing, literature, and web design? Visit us at storymaster.online to learn more.